Arado's AR-234 was the world's first operational jet bomber. Its performance in the reconnaissance role in late 1944 and early 45 was to prove how right its builders were to christen their creation the Lightning, as it swept through Allied airspace with virtual impunity. Indeed, it was to satisfy a 1940 specification for a fast recce type that the 234 was designed. The prototype emerged in 1943 with high-mounted wings and a fuselage cross-section so slim as to preclude the fitting of a conventional undercarriage. The variant seen here being the later type. In the absence of a conventional retractable undercarriage, Arado had designed a three-wheeled trolley that would attach to the underside of the aircraft. This led to the ungainly and militarily unpractical process of raising the whole airframe on jacks and then lowering it bodily onto the trolley. In the early days of testing, the 234 took off with the trolley attached, as can be seen here. For the pilot bringing the 234 back to land on the trolley, the whole experience was decidedly unpleasant and very dangerous. The sink rate of the aircraft and the fairly high spring in the suspension of the trolley led to a very bumpy ride down the runway with very little control being exercised through the brakes. By the end of the runway, the pilot has lost control and the aircraft pulls off onto the side and swerves onto the grass. The test aircraft was then flown once again, employing the trolley for takeoff. When takeoff speed was achieved, the pilot jettisoned his undercarriage. This, in turn, released a parachute to break the trolley's forward momentum and to stop it bouncing up and possibly hitting the aircraft in the underside. Trolley takeoffs were also made employing two Valta rocket pods for extra thrust. These gave an additional burst of power for some 30 seconds and allowed the 234 to make a much more rapid climb out, so avoiding any chance of collision on its underside by the trolley. Once in the air, the 234 demonstrates the turn of speed that made it so difficult for Allied fighters to intercept. While few could doubt the sparkling performance of the 234, its use of an under-fuselage skid and two smaller ones mounted under each engine when landing severely restricted its operational usage. It was thus accepted that the Arado 234 would need to be redesigned to enable the fuselage to accommodate a more conventional retractable undercarriage. The V8 model of the 234A was equipped with four UMO engines to serve as a testbed for the proposed four-engine C model. This would have the same airframe as the B variant, but would mount four UMO engines. The eighth prototype of the AR-234 was also the first produced to the B specification. This was constructed with a slightly wider body that allowed a strong but narrow track nose wheel undercarriage to be fitted. Taking to the air for the first time on March the 10th, 1944, the 234B became the first production model with deliveries to Sonderkommando Gotts taking place in September 1944. Aircraft from this unit were employed to fly over southern England. In the meantime, two of the earlier skid-equipped A models had already shown their worth by reconnoitering the Normandy bridgehead without interception. The bomber variant of the 234 first saw service with KG-76 in the Ardennes Offensive and undertook abortive raids against the Remagen Bridge in early 1945. The bulk of the 274 built were B models. The ME-262 and the AR-234 in whatever variant were two of the most remarkable aircraft to see service in the Second World War. When the Allies plundered the design offices of Germany's major aircraft companies, they found designs for a huge number of jet aircraft, many of whose features would find their way into the first generation of post-war jets.